Welcome friends, this is Christy from Homegrown. Today I want to talk to you about how we organized our homeschool supplies. At first it started really small and then it quickly grew. And one of the reasons why it quickly grew was because I wouldn't just keep the books on hand that the kids needed at the time. Um, these books in the stack right here go from the floor obviously this shelf is taller than I am when I'm standing up and they go up to there and then above the shelf they're stacked there's one two three columns and stacked to the ceiling up there so um the sh why am I showing you my messy shelf well that's all I have right now soon we have a friend hopefully coming I bartered um some things and they're going to come and put us in a nice wooden shelf that goes from wall to wall, ceiling to floor, and it'll handle all this way. This is a cheap Walmart shelf, but um, I would use the books that we had for our kids at the time, whatever grade they were in, and I also made extra activities. So these little totes down here were activities that I found ideas for online and just created them from either things we had at the house or, you know, you could go to the Dollar Tree and get for a buck. And it didn't, I didn't have to go out and buy a science kit for $30 when I could put together my own kit with the same things. You know, they sell wooden popsicle sticks there. They sell beads with letters on them and you don't have to get expensive with it. And homeschooling is not hard. Please don't make it hard. It is very easy. One thing I do stress is to make sure that you follow your state regulations. Um, we live in Indiana and Indiana is one of the laxest states as far as homeschooling and homeschooling rules. I know depending on the state where you're in, you can get into the state, you could drive to the state, state on vacation and have someone question why your kid is not in school. So I've heard stor stories of that, um, but our state is not that way. You have to provide attendance if it's asked for. and basically all I did for that was I had a calendar my little desk calendar I bought one just for that you can get them for three dollars at one a little cheap one for maybe even a buck at Walmart for that year you have to go 180 days just like the regular school year so you start at the beginning of when do you want to start school well, let's start school in I don't know School start in August, so we decided to start ours in September-ish. We would go in a month later, and we would start in September. I would count 180 days out, and we would decide, is this the window that we wanted of 180 days? I'm like, yeah, well, it gives us another month of summer. And then um, because we didn't have in all the extra teacher meeting days and holidays in there that they have for schools, we were still even able to quit a month before. So school was in a month later and it was out a month sooner. I did have my kids do their work. There are school programs where I think they call it unschooling. I think that's great too because you learn from doing and a lot of people believe in that and I think it's a great idea too. For us though, the way that we had this set up, this was better for us and my kids were planning on going to college so I had to prep them for that. How did I do that? Well, I didn't really have to worry about the elementary kids or my middle kids per se, but my high schoolers, I knew that let's say one of them wanted to go to, I don't know, let's just say Ball State or something like that. And Ball State, I, I knew, um, well, first I had to say, do you want to graduate with a regular certificate? What's just a typical high school certificate? Do you want it an honor certificate? That's going to depend on how many of these high school courses or what type they're going to have to have to graduate from this. Also, you need to know what um, what is Ball State going to want. Some things Ball State will want also. So you might have to take some of these courses before you can graduate and move into college. A lot of colleges now are accepting homeschool certificates because um, it's becoming the norm. It has been the norm for a while now, and it's just really starting to pick up. That's another reason why I wanted to talk to you about this. Um, if I say Rona, it refers back to the last year and last two years activities. Um, so if, let's say with the, uh, with the Rona and 
a lot of people have pulled their kids out of public school. I was a teacher last year in a public school, and there was at times when I only had four kids in my classroom. Of a normal classroom of 25 people, there was a day or two, well, no, there was a couple weeks where there was days I went in and I only had four or five kids in my class because they were sent home for whatever reason or they had to be held out for because this person was in contact with this person and I no longer teach I am back home again um I was not interested in doing that again but um and we can get into that in another time but anyway I a lot of people have left the public school system and they're going to homeschooling homeschooling is not hard please don't make it hard I know I've done said this twice so the two, here's what I suggest. If you're, unless you're going to unschool, I don't know the other methods, what they call them, natural schooling, but I know unschooling is one of them. If you're not, and you can also do online programs where the kid's on their iPad and they, you enroll them and you pay for that. And the teacher teaches them, that works great too. For me, I didn't want to pay for that. I knew that I could handle and help and teach my kids from home. Or could get the help. I didn't want to pay because some of them programs are thousand dollars a semester or a term. You might want to check into that. Do your homework. Get a notebook and do your homework on that. Um, <clears throat> know what what do you want to do? Do you want to unschool? Do you want to be online? Do you want to do it yourself? If you want to do it yourself, this is the route I'm going to talk about because this is what we did. We we had some people that were friends of ours had their own schedule. Their kids, they'd let their kids sleep into whenever they wanted to, as long as they got their schoolwork done, fine. And, but some of those did not pressure their kids or really push their kids into going to college after school. So if they did great on their grades or they, they did or didn't do it, that's fine. Um, we don't look at it that way. I don't pressure my kids into going to college. I tell them I want them to go. And... I would like for them, if they are going to go, to give me one good year and see if it works for them and if they like it. Um, I have four children. My oldest is 21. He went to school. He tried it, and it was not for him. And I didn't really figure that it would be. He never really was a sit-behind-a-desk kind of person. He's hands-on, and he left the school, and he actually now works for the union. So he's doing better now than what he would have if he would have probably even finished out college. So you need to do what's best for you and best for your kids. The route we chose was to, I, I we're doing homeschool at, ourselves at home with books. And we had the iPads and the computers to help us. So if they had a problem that not even myself could help them with, they could get online and look it up. And there was programs that were free that you could get onto and look up and it had video even on youtube i think khan academy and you can find videos where it literally shows you step by step how to do those problems for math because you know i'm not the greatest at math and then trying to show a high school student how to do that there's khan academy is great for that you can type in find at the beginning of the chapter what are they working on type that in khan academy boom they pull up a video and it shows you step by step how to do that and they can pause it hit rewind all that good stuff so to back up a little bit, um, the two things that I had for our homeschool was one, the cheap little dollar desktop. I'm going to pitch it at the end of the year. I never really wrote anything in it much other than, here's what I did write in it. I asked the kids, when do you want to start school? Well, obviously they wanted to stretch their summer out, so we start the end of September. We'd mark on there, here's the day. I said, okay, if we start here 180 days with our vacation and whatever holidays puts us up to here for the, the school year. And do you want, is that what you want? That'll put you out of school in like April, something, something. Yeah, that's great. Okay, write that down here. Write it down up here. First day of school, last day of school. And then in that time frame, did you figure out for... Christmas, do you want to take the whole week off? I said, you guys want to take the whole week off for Christmas? Which they usually did. And I'm totally fine with that because we got to go to grandma's. We got to go to this grandma's. We got to get our own house cleaned up and prepared. We have our own, which usually takes a day to clean. Then you have a day of Christmas Eve. You have a day of Christmas Day. So we just take the whole week. And 
Easter, we took, I think, a few days. We didn't take the whole week. We had, if it was on whatever day, then we would take the day before or maybe the day after that. It was a couple day deal, not much. When you skip out all those other days, your, your year is shortened and you can get your school year done faster. They endure more of summer, two months more summer actually, because you are you don't go in until a month later and then you're out a month earlier. So they can help you getting the garden ready, which is fantastic. And they get to play outside. So um, in my calendar, in my calendar, I had first day of school, last day of school, put your, um, put your holidays in there. So do you want a week of Christmas? Do you want a couple days for Easter? Let's say you wanna go on vacation. Put your vacation, but whatever you do, make sure that between this first day of school and the last day of school, you have 180 days of school in there. That's what you wanna do. I didn't count for sick. I didn't count attendance for sick. We, that was our days. And if someone comes to our door and says, hey, are your kids doing school? Cause you've been in town every day for the last three days. Well, I can show them my calendar. Look here, we went yesterday, we went the day before, the day before that. Just pop it up and say, here you go. And I kept grades. So I had a, an old fashioned little tiny block grading book, manual grade book. And you know, I put my kid's name. Actually, I had one page per child just because, I mean, it was just simpler for me that way. I had their name and then I put um, whatever, um, one section you put say math and then up here you'll put whatever it was for math, what chapter. And then that's where your grade goes, all the way down through there. Math chapter one, math chapter two, math chapter three. Down here, social studies, social studies, whatever. You know, you, you had a certain way that you wanna do it to keep your grades. Why did I keep grades? That's a pain in the butt. You can do it on the computer. I want it old fashioned way. Everything I do and then I show you um, I really try to be a hundred percent. There might be some where I'm not, but I really try to be a hundred percent non-electronic. And the reason why for that is because if your electronic dies, you can't get that material back. Let's say for whatever stupid reason, the internet shuts down. I know two weeks ago, Instagram was shut down and God forbid you thought the world would come to an end. Didn't really bother me that much. I didn't understand why it wasn't working, but it didn't kill me. Some people were flipping out because that's the only way it was a Facebook and because they run their businesses off of that. People have got to start getting set up to where you don't need electronics. You don't need the computer. You don't need, I'm not saying grid down prepping kind of situation, you know, uh, spit hit the fan kind of a situation, but what are you going to do if you don't have electricity? You know, I push you to flip the main switch on your breaker for one whole day and see how many times you walk in that bathroom and flip the light switch on in habit, not knowing you're doing it. And I have people laughing right now because I do it too. Try to get to where you're using electric. Okay. For example, canning. When you do your tomatoes, a lot of people have blenders and they have mixers. Get a manual food mill. I have one. You mount it to your counter. You do, look, you're burning calories, burning calories, and you're working your tomatoes at the same time. Homeschooling, I don't trust the computer. I, I just feel like if my computer dies, if it decides to get a virus, if something, I'm not paying for a virus. You know what I mean? If all this stuff happens, if your electricity goes out, then where is your grades for this whole year? You want to send your kid to school, which they might or might not have if there's, you know, electricity, but you want to send your kid to school? How are you going to get that transcript? Because your computer took a dump and you didn't save your information. I did it all manually. I had a, these files right here that you're looking at. There, there's tabs in there for each kid. And you put their grade papers in there and their main, um, their main tests. We had chapter tests. And um, I put their grades in the grade paper. The grade, I would rip it out and that was their page for that semester and then, you know, kind of like the report card. And then when we were all said and done and I figured all their grades and I can show that maybe to you in another video when you pop that dude open, math, A plus or math, B, you know, and then all I had to do when I was ready to do my son's transcripts, when he was ready to go to college, I flipped back through his pages 
and I wrote it on a piece of paper, then I made a, a spreadsheet, put it on there, and sent that to the college, and he, it, they accepted it. It was all manual, I didn't have to worry about going back in a computer, or where was this file, or that file, or did it get lost? It was all right there in a binder with his name on it, so super easy. The things I would write in my calendar, first day, last day, vacations, holidays, um, put activities in there. You know, let's sit, and I turned everything into a field trip. My kids hated me for it because we would go to uh, the aquarium or the zoo or something. Oh, mom, are you going to turn this into a field trip? I said, yep. So today for science, we went to the aquarium. You write me a page paper of the three things you like the most and write me a paragraph each. And that is your grade for the week. Simple. All I had to do was read a paper really quick. And that was their grade for the whole entire week. And some of them I didn't do that on every time. You know, we went to a farm machinery show and that was extra credit. I really didn't have anything to put that to. So I was like, hey, do this for extra credit. I'll put it on this grade over here. And so it was really nice. I always kept the main grades and to keep me organized. But anyway, kind of a long video. So I had a lot to talk about. But I want to show you. Okay, things are getting easier or harder to find. And these books here you could buy from the company when you enroll your child it's about a hundred and some change some of the books were 250 dollars per book wowie yeah i don't suggest that so if you know you're gonna do it you don't if let's say okay we did the abeka program i knew everything lined up nicely so that's how we did ours you don't have to do a Becca. You could go to Goodwill and find a grammar book that someone put in there from two years ago and use it in play. Uh, matter of fact, that's an example. I didn't care for the grammar books in the Abeka program and I substituted it, something else for that, just because I didn't care for the way that their grammar books were worded. And, but um, in their program their books this is one of their books and i like them because they're there's a lot of pictures kids get bored with sitting there in front of, they're very colorful i will tell you this is a christian program so if you don't like talking about god or don't like reading about it or it being included into your science then this might not be the program for you we're not go to church every sunday people but i love the way these books are set up they're very nice they're very well written um, I love the, the way they looked. On the end of them, it's like a little flying book, and it has their name. So when they're side by side at Goodwill, they stand out like a sore thumb. I can just look right through there. Boom. I see them. I grab it. First Saturday of every month, Goodwill has their everything in the store 50% off. Whether they still do, my kids and I haven't been there for a few months, but at least in our town, and I think it's in every town, Goodwill has... Everything in the store, 50% off the first Saturday of every month. These books here, this is a paperback. And this would have been, I think, 96, 98 cents. I don't remember exactly. But on that 50% day, I would have got this book for 40 cents, 45 cents, whatever the price was, half of that. And as an example, I will show you. These books here are math books well this one's a math book look how big this book is this is humongous this is every bit of probably two inches never been touched not once if you see writing in here it's because my six-year-old and i were working on it this is a math book mcgraw hill math book i this is paperback so on the 50 percent off day i got this book for 40 some cents here's a whole entire semester maybe even a whole year's worth of math for 40 cents and all you have to do is follow along with the pages in here fantastic this one here is another giant book had never been at the time had you've seen you wrote on never been touched the only thing wrong with this book was someone wrote on the front with crayon i got this book for like 40 some cents i think that day so i would go to goodwill and fill carts and carts and carts no bags and bags probably i'd come out of there with three or four walmart bags my cart would be full of books but i was looking for a becca books and for these type of books, and you can teach your kids out of this, no problem. But if you want more of a stabilized, um, structured program, and you know that this goes after this one, after this one, you can use something like that. 
and you can still find those books there. All you have to do is go, and I keep saying Abeka. I'm not, um, I don't make money off of it or anything. I'm just saying it because that's what we used, and I like that program. But let's say you're like, well, how do you start out? How do you know which books to get? Well, I went to the Abeka website, and I looked up fifth grade, this is just an example, fifth grade books or whatever that we have to have for that whole year. Write it down. Here's the book I had to have. Here's the number on the book that I had to have. And um, I wrote them all down. So for this child, I had to have these books for fifth grade. And then what I did was I spent uh, probably two or three weeks and I went on to Goodwill. I went to eBay and to Amazon and um, was looking up used, lightly used books. And I even had friends in the program too, which helped because they were on the same program we were. And their kid would finish that book, so they handed it down to us. They didn't want to keep them anymore. I'm keeping them. They didn't want to keep them, so their child would finish the book. They'd, hey, you want this book? Well, sure. Or we would trade for something. I traded some things for a book, or I would just pay them, you know, 2 or $3 for a book, 5 bucks for a book. And so I've managed to collect up quite a few. Not all of this is a Becca books. I don't know if I said this earlier in the video, but there's a stack here. The shelf's bigger than I am, and then there's up to the ceiling up there with books too and I will continue to collect books and the reason why I'm saying that is because I think some things are going to become harder to find and when you get a hold of that stuff you know it makes sense to me to go to Goodwill or a place like that and buy books and things you can keep and you can teach to yourself or your children or to use. So for example, you went to Goodwill, why buy a $5 pumpkin decoration to hang on your front door unless it's exactly what you want when you could spend $5 in books, come home with a Walmart bag and have your child's whole entire school year's worth of books in that bag. Makes complete sense to me. I don't know. Sometimes people do things, but anyway, um, you know, and this is off subject, but I, when I go to the store, I make my store trips worthwhile. I don't, I don't just go, so let's say we're out of um, ketchup. When I go to the store to get ketchup, I'll get four ketchups. I don't get one. You put the one in the fridge, you put the other four in your storage. When And I'm not talking shelf clearing because I think that's ridiculous and not right to do. It's very irresponsible. But I do buy more. Then wouldn't be no different than a person coming behind me that has 10 kids and they need four bottles of ketchup. You know, I don't clear the shelf unless there's, let's say you go in and there's only four bottles there, then I'll only buy two. You know, you leave some for the person behind you. And, um, but collect that. It's kind of like with the Abeka books. Get things that make sense, you know. And so some things I want to show you here. Don't forget about first Saturday of the month, 50% off, and you get these books. Okay, you can get them. Hardbacks are... Hardbacks are more expensive than softbacks and hard, with chapters. So if you're a Hunger Games reader or, you know, things with big hardback chapter books, those are the most expensive. So and then you go into hardbacks and then you have um, just plain softback books. They're cheaper. That's how ours works. And then um, it'll be half off. So some things I want to show you when you're homeschooling. This is just your little... Um, freebie I guess or golden nugget for the end of the day so to help teach my preschooler his alphabet or maybe even some words and I'll see if I can show you this I already had this around the house this cost me nothing uh, I dumped out whatever was in it and these here we got at the Dollar Tree this is one of those magnetic things where you write on it with a pen and it shows up in black and my mother-in-law, for years ago, gave us Hooked on Phonics, which I don't use it in the way that Hooked on Phonics uses it. But, you know, here's the word my. So what I would do, what I would say, let's work on the word my, find my. And in here, I have beads. These are beads with the letters on them of the alphabet. They're all different colors. I got a humongous bag at the Dollar Tree for a buck. So for $2, I made this here, and he really liked to use them. And you can just, you know, if you say my, and you lay, you can lay this card right down next to him on the table or her, and they have to find these letters in here. 
and then they can they can either write them on their magnetic board here or they can pull out my in these one thing that was his favorite he didn't really use this board much um <clears throat> the thing that was his favorite to do was pull out a card so if his word was my we had the pipe cleaners and i have no idea where the pipe cleaners i'm sure he he's probably made a bracelet i've got little pipe cleaner bracelets everywhere all over the house and that's probably where they went but he'll pull out a pipe cleaner and he'll put m y on that bracelet so he may you know and they stayed in here and then when we were done i would clean off all the beads and put everything in here next time he would put he would and that helps with their motor function too because there's little holes and they have to put that pipe cleaner in through that hole on top of the fact that they have to match up the letters with the you know so these are little things it was two bucks two dollars for this and i'll give you one more before we have to go because i don't want the video to be too long some of these things, this, look at that, Goodwill, $1.99. I'm sure that's backwards on this video, but I'm going to show you. Alphabet Dice Game. This is good things, too. You can find games that they're, this is great. You have to look this up. This is Alphabet, and you make words with it. I, my teenage daughters and I play this a lot, and we like to play it. It's actually quite fun. It's almost like um, Scrabble, kind of, in a way. But um, with my younger one, we just spell words. We just spell words with it. Buck ninety nine on the fifty percent off day. This would be a dollar. Um, let's say there's a day, and this is cleaned out. You can't see the bottom down here, but I have a lot of activities here, here, here. This whole shelf was nothing but totes with activities on them. How do you choose what you want to do for the day? You can do something. Let's say they're struggling in math. You can do a, a math activity with one of these. Or let's say we don't know what we're going to do for today. What are we going to do for an activity today? <clears throat> I made popsicle sticks in a jar. And when you pull them out, that says ABC soup. That's the can I just showed you. So you would shake it around. All right, what are we gonna do today? And I, we knew what these were. You know, I even have him come up with names, help me come up with names of these, so he knew what they were. All right, so let's pull this out. Today, oh my gosh, I pulled the same thing out, ABC soup. So that's what we're gonna play today. You know, we'll play, and then tomorrow we didn't know what we were doing, and we have blocks, you know. And the blocks were, I found these at Goodwill. These are math blocks actual math blocks that you stack you know shows you hundreds tens um you know there's different he would more use them like a puzzle but even him seeing that helps you know with different things so i have a whole total of those and that's how we came up with um, what we were going to do. And then I have, there's some painting and science things in here. And this is his free reading section. So believe it or not, this book right here, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, he can read, he's just in first grade and he can read this whole book, which a lot of people were thinking, oh, wow, big deal. He, there's some words in here. I mean, he can read this whole entire book to me. I think that's great. Without help, he reads to me. Matter of fact, two nights ago when we went to bed, he read. He's like, "Mommy, can I read you to sleep?" And he got this book, and he got what was the other one he got? Um, I don't remember the other one. He got this one and another one, and he read them to me at bedtime. Kind of like when I oh, it was Llama Llama. Yeah, Llama goes to school. So. Uh, this is free reading. <clears throat> Some of these were fun, you know, Yahtzee, but Yahtzee teaches you math and numbers. And let me show you one more. A lot of my activity boxes are in the basement where the kids have took them, played with them, and not brought them back. So um, I can't wait till the shelf is built. This here, I come up with this on my own. Um, and I really like this. Let me see if I can get a little closer. 
This is a dollar from the Dollar Tree, okay, this plastic. And the cool thing is if you decide you don't want to have this stuff anymore, you don't want to homeschool, you can get rid of this. But I do want to show you. You can buy a whole packet of these little rings for a dollar at the Dollar like or the Dollar Tree, like um, 20 of them, 25 or something like that. These are index cards. You can buy hundreds of these and reuse them, you know, multiple times. Like I used one ring in this and maybe a handful of cards. So I have the these things, the rest of them stacked for another activity. But anyway, these little gems, I don't know if you can see them in my hand. These are things you could put in the bottom of a plant when you have it in a vase or uh, a fish aquarium. The, the little gems, you can buy a bag, big bag of these for a book at the Dollar Tree. They're different colors. There's orange, pink, and blue. And what I done was I sat down with these cards and I took a colored pencil and I placed them in patterns on here and I drew around with a blue with a blue colored pencil. And there's an orange or red. Two actually these are two reds. That's what the two two reds and a blue. So what he has to do is he has to use this. These were a book. Because pasta I already had in the house. So I literally just throw a bunch of pasta and seeds in here. This is wavy noodles. This is penne pasta, wagon wheel pasta. And there's dried beans and rice and peas and different kind. But oh, there's beads in there. So what he has to do is find the colors on here. So I'm going to use my tongs and can't use your hands. And I pulled it out and I'm going to lay it on here on the blue, just like that. Now he's got to find two red or pink. I'm going to say pink. They're not red. So dig around in here some more. <clears throat> oh, here's one. The noodles make it a little harder to get. See, I'm having a little bit of trouble. This helps with, um, <laughs> might be able to hand and cheat. There we go. And lay that on there. And once he gets them all in the pattern, so he's got to find one more pink one, then he's done with that card. But I have him go through as many cards as possible. There's not that many on here. When he gets them all, then he's done. Here's this one here is yellow, blue, yellow, blue. So he's got to find those and put them on here. This cost me a dollar for the container, a dollar for this. I don't want to even say a dollar for this because there's many of these and many of these. But easy. Easy homeschool things that you could do um, to do this from home. And this shelf, this was a Walmart shelf, and I think it cost me 20 bucks. I have it behind a door. It perfectly fits behind a door. And this thing up here is a curtain that comes down and it's black and it covers this. So if I didn't have all these books piled right here, you wouldn't see anything in the shelf. It just looks like a big black square here. So there's ways to hide um, some of it if you don't really want it sitting out on your counters and things. I have a longer burger basket, big one with handles. It's a picnic basket. We keep all of our puzzles in it. Do you know the little boxes of puzzles you can get for a buck and sit for hours and hours putting puzzles together? Um, we store puzzles in there. So there's ways to have a cute home and still have homeschooling in it. So um, until next time, please like the video, subscribe. There will be many more videos like this showing you how we do it here. Hopefully you'll get great ideas and um, spread the word. Tell your friends and I will see you next time.